Okay, while we're on the subject of shin splints in my last video, I'm gonna show you how we tape for shin splints, especially for runners, so they can run with the tape. Now this is for tibialis posterior injuries, especially up here, but it also caters for tendinopathies that come right down the inside of the malleolar into here. Now, the tape we're gonna use is kinesio tape, so you can run with it, it's not a fixed tape, it's elastic, but we're gonna use the tension on it to try and give you that support that spring that you need to help out that muscle so you can run through this. So this is for people who are back to running, it's to assist with that, try and give them a little bit more comfort, a little more support to get those runs done. So we're going to go through two parts of the tibialis posterior taping. One is where we do the first bit of stirrup coming up the inside from the arch through the inside of the heel. Now that's going to be with the foot in E version, okay, so the tissues on stretch, and then we're going to do a second one that sort of overlays that, and the foot's going to go into inversion, and that's to tighten it up a little bit. And then what we do is almost like a band aid support for the inside of the shin. We do like a basket weave type crossover, and that's to try and support the tissues right where it meets the tendon through here. So I'm going to show you that as well in the full video. So let's start off with if I bring foot down here, I'll show you what I want you to start off with when we tape this. We're using a beautiful red tape today. Of course, colors don't mean anything apart from color. What I suggest we do, show you what I do, is you measure how far up you want to go. Now, it depends on where that injury is. If the injury is very low, you don't have to go so far, but if the injury is quite high, you're going to have to go right up to the warmest of the tibial plateau there. So I would measure the whole distance of from the heel from where you want to start, because what you're going to do is that tape is going to stretch, and so you don't want it too long. All right, so for this one, measure two, cut the same length, okay? And then you're going to round the edges like that so you don't have any sharp bits and round the other end as well. The reason we're only doing like that length is because it's going to stretch, it's going to be stuck from this side of the foot but then stretch up and as we expand it, of course, it's going to get longer. So your first one, what I do is put them on an eversion position, okay? So that position there. So as long as that patient can hold that position, you might have to hold it as well. But we start this on the other side of the foot. Now to get your angles right, you look at this side first and go, okay, I want to be coming up the inside and covering the tibialis posterior tendon insertion point here. I don't want to miss that. So I definitely want to be over that, but don't stick it down just yet. And then you think, okay, I need to be around the base of the foot. So I would then start, okay, I'm going to start there. What you want to do is make sure, this does take a little bit of practice, but there you go. You can see how much I've started on there. Okay, now that's a 0% tension. And then when I'm on this side, I can then angle that with his foot in, in E version. Can you hold that there for me? Hold it there, that's it. You come around here at about 50%. Okay, not too hard because otherwise the tape's gonna fall off. Come around, cover that tendon, just pushing it down as you go. Around the malleoli. And then from here, I would then crank this tension up. Okay, so give it a good sort of 75 all the way up to there. And then at the top, that tension needs to be zero. Okay, zero percent there, so it doesn't rip off. All right. And then I've covered his area here, okay, but I'm also covering the entire tenant and I've got a really nice anchor point. If you put the anchor point here, even though the tenant stops here, it's just going to fall off. Okay, you need to go around the side of the foot, so that tension there doesn't have to be hard. It's just a wrap to stop it falling off, that's all, okay. So push that one down, all right. Then the second one, what I like doing is actually bring him right into inversion, okay. So this one, very similar you probably end up it goes a bit higher because he's of the shape of his foot. Cover it, and the good thing about this is you can look where you've been, and if you need, to, you want to cover it, but I'd go cover half of it. So I've come quite anterior with this. I can afford to go posterior more. So if I look at that, I'll cover by half this side and put his anchor point there. Just make sure no wrinkles, because when you're running, you don't want wrinkles causing any blisters, right? So there, and then I want them to go invert. So hold that in there for me. That's it. And then same drill, 
50% around here. You can't go too hard because if he everts, it's going to rip it off. And then pull it up, crank this up to get that real support through there. Down it goes, and then zero at the top. And really push that down, heat that tissue up so it keeps the good. Now what you're going to, have to do here is make sure this is really stuck down before he goes anywhere. Otherwise it's just going to fall off and you have to redo it. So you want that glue really getting in there and really warming up and making sure that doesn't come off. So there's the first two parts. Then what we want to do is put like a band-aid support type effect for where it's injured. Okay, so this is going to work for people who have got the shin splint pain up here. You won't need this if you're just doing a tibialis posterior tendinopathy down the bottom there, but you do need it for here. So this is what I like doing, and this my runners love this one. So what you aim for, you, very small, maybe two squares, okay, is all you're doing, and I'd do about four to six of these. Okay, so you could just measure two, keep doing two. Again, you're going to, I'll do four to show you. Round all the edges. Trick is, get them all together and round all four at the same time. Like that. Same drill. So what you want to do with these ones is take off all the backing and You've got to think the anchors need to be 0%, but the middle section needs to be 100. So what you do is you grab it like that and stretch the 100, put it down an angle. Like if you imagine if the injury is here, you want to be you want to cover the whole thing from the top to the bottom. So there, push it to there, and then anchors zero. Alright? So what it's doing is it's this tension is pulling these two tissues together which gives it support, okay? Because what's happening is you're getting a bit of a, a ripping going on like that with shin splints. So this one then covers it downward like a thatch work on an opposite angle. So this would go 45 this way, and you're going to go there. To the middle is where the, is where the bone line is, like that. And then there. And then you think the next one's going to go half over it. So you could probably afford to do six, depending on how long that area is. Same again. This one, 100%. Don't try to get too many fingers on the tape. Cover it. And then down. Try not to get any wrinkles in it. As long as those anchors are zero. So you can see like this section here will have a double taping, right? And so with this section, if I put another one there, so you have a whole section that's got double taping, which is really effective on one way and then double taping on the other way. So it's going to get a lot of band-aids, if you like. So this one will go down here. Pull it 100%. Zero there. There, there, voila. And so, like I said, you can afford to go another one and another one. And you can see that crisscross pattern, which is going to bring the tissues together like that and really support them. And runners just find that just so relieving for that section. And like I said, this is for people who are returning to running. It's like, obviously, like if you're very acute, you're not going to run on it. It's not designed for that. It's when they're getting a lot better and the injury is getting better, but it still needs a bit of support to get them through that first few runs. This is what does the job. It's great stuff. Hope that helps you all running. See you next time.